I would like to welcome you to our Wednesday evening check-in. My name is Andy and I'm pastor here at First Baptist Church in Williamsburg, Kentucky. And tonight we're going to continue our look at spiritual disciplines. Last week we looked at the discipline of meditation. And this week we're going to look at prayer. And prayer is one of the best ways that we can open our lives to God's direction, where we can ask for God's assistance, where we can express our concerns, where we can lift up the needs of others. And so I um, hope that in the next few minutes as we talk about prayer and look at a little bit of scripture, and as I give you an exercise to practice this week, I hope that your prayer life will grow and in turn your communion with God will grow in the process. I want to open with just a course called Every Single Day, kind of a reminder of the need to make a space, make a place for God every day in our lives. Every single day I'm waiting to hear you Every single day I want to be near you Here's my Maybe you can think of that as a prayer of commitment to, to God. You know, so last week we looked at the, the topic of meditation, and sometimes it's tempting to think of meditation as being something very complex and very different, uh, but the definition that Richard Foster shared, and I've used his book, A Celebration of Discipline, as a guide for these studies, um, but the definition that he gives is that meditation is the ability to hear God's voice and to obey God's word. Christians, we, we are called to grow in our hearing of God's word and following God's voice. And so we can meditate on scripture. We can meditate on nature. Um, we can meditate on the events of the day or on a topic. But either way, you know, we're taking time to open ourselves to God's way. I hope this past week you got a chance to, to meditate, to think, maybe take a small portion of Scripture and just repeat it, perhaps memorize it, look at the same one every day. I encourage you to think about John chapter 3, where we meet Nicodemus. Um, and so you could go back and see that if you'd like to. It was last week's, um, last week's Wednesday evening check-in. But this week we're going to talk about prayer. And, and prayer is... Um, is something that doesn't have to be complex as well. You know, sometimes I, I had a friend who took the Master Life Discipleship Program 20 or 30 years ago, and one of the activities in Master Life is you build up to taking a prayer retreat, you know, and you just pray, pray, pray about things for, you know, for hours and hours. And he shared with me that he was nervous because he has tried to get up early and pray about everything he could think of, and it took like 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of want to remind you that prayer takes practice. I have found in my life it's easier to buy a book on prayer than to just sit down and actually pray. Um, but, you know, if you think about it, a, a, a casual jogger who runs two or three days a week is never going to get ready for the Boston Marathon. What do you have to do? You have to incrementally um, practice. You have to be out there on your feet, out there on the road. Um, and so prayer is a way that we we think about God's uh, way. We have a conversation with God, and as we um, as we become as we become more familiar with God, and as we grow in our relationship with God, we we want to conform our lives to Christ. I have a few quotes that might encourage you today. That um, that um, I'll share those in a few minutes. Um, but I remember in the first chapter of Mark, Jesus has. You know, he's performed a miracle. The people are flocking to him. And what did he do early in the morning? He went out from that place to a quiet place to pray. Everybody was looking for him. He could have spent the whole day. He could have spent months and months, weeks and weeks, healing everyone. But in his quiet time away, in a silent place, in communion with God, his Heavenly Father, he sensed that it was time to go on and to move from that place and to proclaim the good news in other places. He could have stayed there and had a great, fruitful ministry, 
um, but Jesus got direction in prayer. And that's, that's what prayer can be for us in a sense. It can be a lot of different things. And the passage I want to show, share with you today is from James chapter 5, and it talks about some of the practical nature of prayer. James is one of those practical books. Um, if you ever just need, you know, it's almost line by line advice on how to live the Christian life. Chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, it goes like this. Are any of you in trouble? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you ill? You should send for the church elders who will pray for them and rub olive oil on them in the name of the Lord. This prayer made in faith will heal the sick. The Lord will restore them to health, and the sins they have committed will be forgiven. So then, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you will be healed. The prayer of a good person has a powerful effect. Two or three things jump out at us about prayer in those verses. When is an appropriate time to pray? It's, an, it's appropriate to pray when you're in trouble um, or when you have joy, uh, something happy that's happened, a, a thanks to God. Um, you can pray to sing praises. You can pray when you're sick. You can pray when you want to lift up the needs of somebody else. Um, you know, prayer can be really in our lives, it can be like breathing we can grow accustomed to lifting up matters in prayer every day. Um, and so, um, and here James reminds us that prayer does make a difference. God is not way over there, way out there, out of touch. The world has not just been slung out into existence. There is this relationship God um, has with his people and with the world. And so when we pray, we enter into all of those possibilities. And I don't quite understand that, but I know that it's true. And so um, James implies that as well, um, that we are to enter into this world of prayer. And so a couple of quotes that I want to share with you that Richard Foster shared in his book on um, prayer. The first one is one of his quotes. The first, well, the first two are quotes that he gave. The, the first one says this, to pray is to change. To pray is to change. And you know what that tells me is when we go to God in prayer, we are not just asking and not just speaking, but we are opening our hearts to the possibility that God has for us and for the situation. Many times when I've gone to God in prayer, the circumstances surrounding a situation I haven't prayed but boy, my attitude has, and boy, my heart has, and boy, my feelings toward the people involved have. To pray is to change. I think that's a pretty powerful quote. Um, the next quote that comes from his book is this, The life that is pleasing to God does not come by gritting our teeth, but by falling in love. Not gritting our teeth and forging ahead into the wind against all forces. No, it's falling in love with God. You know, certainly, we pray and ask for things. Certainly we pray, give requests on other people's behalf. And, and when prayers are answered, that is a wonderful thing. But that's really secondary to the reason that we are called to pray. We're called to pray um, to grow in our communion with God, to grow in our relationship with God. Um, one other quote that I want to share is from Soren Kierkegaard, the uh, philosopher, he said this, a person prayed, and the, and at first he thought that prayer was talking, but he, came, he became more and more quiet until in the end he realized that prayer is listening. Sometimes it's very appropriate to pour out your heart to God, to list needs, to pray for someone, to, to, to just, just let it flow. But then it is also very appropriate in prayer to have a a scripture or a situation or a person in mind and to just be silent before God and allow God to to direct your thoughts and allow God's spirit to shape um, your feelings and your attitudes in the way that you understand that situation. Um, so I have a couple of things I want you to try to practice this week. I, I, I really believe that prayer is one way when we pray for each other, that's one way that we help take care of each other. Um, Frank 
Laubach said it this way. He said, I want to learn how to live so that to see someone is to pray for them, to just kind of lift them up as we even see them. I remember when I was young, um, in, in my first church, I was in my late 20s, and a group of us were riding to, I think, an associational meeting, and the associate, um, associational director, her name was Liz Emery, um, was driving. I was in the front seat, several people were in the back seat, and we came upon a wreck. We were going out to a church out from Charlottesville somewhere, and there was a wreck on the side of the road, and, and Liz just pulled over, and she said, friends, let's pray for them. I mean, just right in that moment, she grabbed my hand, and we just, she just led a prayer in the car, and we just prayed for that family on the side of the road there. The police were there, and I, you know, I don't know any of the details, but I just, that, that's one of the first times in my life that I thought, gosh, what if my first instinct in a situation is to pray? What if my first thought is, how can I lift this up to God? And so I want to encourage you this week to practice flash prayers. When somebody comes to mind, when some situation, when you see something, just pray for that individual. Now, you can't necessarily on the highway close your eyes and bow, but you can say, Lord, have mercy on them. God bless that family. God guide that officer or those people or whatever, um, those paramedics or whatever you see. Um, and so I want to encourage you to just kind of think about how can you pray for somebody you don't know just when you see a situation arise. So practice flash prayers. That's what we would call those. The second thing I would like to invite you to do is to just set aside 10 minutes a day and to just say, Lord, who would you have me to pray for? Who is somebody that you want me to think about? Somebody you want me to lift up? Somebody you want me to befriend or, or to offer a prayer for? Um, when's it appropriate to pray? When you're in trouble, James says. When's it appropriate to pray? When you're happy. You can sing praises or when you're ill or when you want to lift up somebody, or when you want to care for somebody. Um, really, the way to, j just like if you were going to train for the Boston Marathon, you got to get out there on the road. The way to learn to pray is through prayer. Um, I would encourage you this week to practice those two things. Every day, try to say just kind of a flash prayer. When you see a situation, just lift up somebody in prayer, It just kind of quickly like that. Um, and then also to set aside time every day and just say, Lord, who is it that you would want me to lift up to you? Who is it that you want me to notice and to call out for in your name? Um, who is it you'd want me to be praying for? And then, then pray for that person and keep that person in mind. And perhaps God would have you make a new friend or, or minister in some way. Um, so the second thing that we've talked about in this few weeks of looking at spiritual disciplines, last week, meditation, this week, prayer. Won't you practice it? Uh, I think that would be, um, if if God's people practice praying every day, I think a lot of things would happen in this world. I want to end with just a blessing for you. Thank you for being here. Please share this with somebody. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Face toward you and 